of them got a vote in the last election. <laughs> <laughs> Question number four, the Honourable <clears throat> Dr Jonathan Coleman. To the Minister of Health. Does he stand by his answer in the House yesterday to a question regarding a third medical school specialising in rural medicine that, quote, I don't think it's in the public interest to give further information on that matter? The Honourable Dr David Clark. Mr Speaker, I appreciate the high level of interest in ensuring that we have a workforce required to deliver the health services New Zealanders expect and deserve. However, it is not in the public interest to explore in this House the proposals currently under consideration. What criteria does he use to determine whether a matter widely and extensively reported in the Waikato Times and through other national media outlets is in the public interest or not? Mr Speaker, um, I use the usual considerations that ministers apply. What possible issues of national security or individual privacy would cause him to answer a question on a third medical school by saying, I don't think it's in the public interest to give further information on that matter? Uh, Mr Speaker, I note that the Minister skipped over some of the usual reasons, such as privacy and commercial sensitivity, that occur in the list of reasons that a member may look uh, to so declare something not to be in the public interest. In fact, it is not required that a minister declare exactly why, but I note the minister has carefully avoided those that are most likely. Dr Shane Reddy. Thank you. To the minister, does he agree with Derek Wright, acting CEO of Waikato DHB, who told the Health Select Committee this morning that there is a lot of public interest in a rural medical school? Uh, Mr Speaker, we have had an issue with uh, producing enough GPs in this country and particularly getting them in rural placements. That is an established fact. The previous government failed miserably to address this, this in any way. We have pledged to increase the number of GP training places. We're doing something about this issue, unlike the previous regime. Dr Shane Retty. Does he deny telling Otago Medical School and Otago University that this government will not support a third medical school? Uh, Mr Speaker, yes. Check that one. <laughs> Have his... Order. Sorry. Order. Oh, just under my breath. I withdraw. I apologise. Okay. <laughs> Preemptively. Oh, All right. Lucky. Have his advisers pointed out to him that it's not a good idea to dodge legitimate questions in the House by pulling the first thing out of your brain that comes Order. to it and saying... Order. Member will resume his seat. That question's gone. No. No, the member, the member is a very senior member, a long-term front bencher, and he should know better. The Honourable Todd McClay, question number five. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Five. To the Minister of Trade and Export Growth, what additional market access gains has his government achieved in the revised Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement? Mr Speaker. The Honourable David Parker. 